This video is the introduction to topic 9, How do musical instruments make sounds? This is going to be a special guest lecture with Professor Joe Wolfe from the School of Physics at UNSW. Hello and welcome back to Everyday Physics. This week you're going to be looking at how musical instruments make sounds. You've got a special guest lecturer this week, Professor Joe Wolfe, who works in acoustical physics. So he's a member of the School of Physics and I'll let him now take over and tell you a bit about himself and then talk about how musical instruments make sounds. Thank you, Liz. Yes, I'm in the acoustics group at the University of New South Wales and we study the acoustics of the voice, the ear and musical instruments. Today we're going to talk a little bit about sound, about how to quantify it in the normal terms of pitch, loudness and timbre. And we'll also relate those to the things that a physicist would recognise, the frequency, the amplitude, the power and the spectrum. So, as I'm talking to you now, in my larynx, my vocal folds are opening and closing very quickly to let little puffs of air into my vocal tract. Some complicated things happen there and we'll talk about those later on. But the important thing is that uh, oscillating stream of air is set up in my vocal tract. That creates a sound wave, varying pressures and flows in the air, that propagates across to the microphone. In the microphone, it's converted to an electrical signal, as we'd say a, a voltage, and you can look at the soundtrack of this video and expand it like this so that you can actually see the individual oscillations in the electrical potential made by, by the microphone, which correspond to the changes in pressure due to the sound wave. So, for instance, if I sing a note, ah, look at the soundtrack there, we see that each cycle of vibration is about 10 milliseconds long. We call that the period. One hundredth of a second or ten milliseconds is the period of each vibration in ah. So we say that that's a hundred cycles per second or more commonly in physics one hundred hertz. A hertz is one vibration per second. Now if I go ah, ah, that's what musicians would call an octave and physicists call it that too. We've doubled the frequency and if you look at the soundtrack here you'll see that the period is five milliseconds. The name octave comes from the Greek word for eight and it corresponds to a doubling in frequency and the, the eight comes from a particular musical scale. If I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, eight is an octave. The pitch depends on the ratio of frequencies, so any doubling of the frequency is an octave. Here are some examples from Fizzclips. Fizzclips is uh, one of our educational websites and I'll be referring to that from time to time. Uh, for musicians, another common interval is the perfect fifth, corresponding to five notes in a scale. One, two, three, four, five, one, five is a fifth. One, two, three, four, five, one, five is another fifth. One, two, three, four, five, one, five is another one. And every time I've increased the frequency by 50%. A musical fifth is a ratio of approximately three to two. 
The fact that pitch depends on the ratio of frequencies means that the pitch is proportional to the logarithm of the frequency. So the musical percept of pitch related to the logarithm of the physical parameter, the frequency. The loudness of a sound depends partly on the power that arrives at your ear. So ah has got more power than ah. And we can see that the amplitude on the soundtrack is greater for ah than for ah. It also, however, depends a lot on the frequency. If you'd like to find out the frequency response of your own ear, then you can go to this website and do a little test of your ear. If you've been listening to personal music systems a lot, it's probably very good for your auditory health to check up how your hearing response is going. So, at constant frequency, the loudness increases with the amplitude of the sound. Uh, sound level me is measured in decibels and loudness is measured in sones and both of those are relatively complicated scales. Uh, one useful thing to remember is that if you double the power in a sound signal, you increase the sound le level by three decibels. Well, there's one word left which is timbre and timbre is sort of a catch-all for everything else. It's defined like this. If two sounds have the same loudness and the same pitch, but they're still different, the thing that is different is timbre. In fact, many things could be timbre. Timbre could refer to the different combinations of frequency that are present in a sound, but it's very largely dependent on how the sound signal varies over time, how quickly it builds up to its maximum intensity, how it fades away, and how it varies over time. While we're still on sound, one rather important parameter of sound is the speed at which sound travels. You've probably noticed that in a thunderstorm you see the lightning and then hear the thunder perhaps seconds after the lightning. That tells you that the light from the lightning travels much faster than the sound of the thunder since both of them are created at the same electrical event between a cloud and the ground. In fact, the speed of sound is about one-third of a kilometre per second. So if you count the time between lightning and thunder and divide the number of seconds by three, you get approximately the distance to the lightning strike, making the approximation that the light has travelled infinitely fast, which in this instance is not a bad approximation. To be more quantitative, we could do some simple experiments. Here are two simple experiments that I did in Fizz Clips to measure the speed of sound. One of them uses a long distance shot and a camera, the other one uses timed echoes. Special thanks to Sebastian Frick for doing all the filming and editing of this video. If you'd like to find out more about sound or the voice, then it would be a good idea to visit these Fizz Clip sites. 
A web page about the music group at UNSW can be found at this final address if you are interested in finding out more about this topic.